All right, we now move to the uh, the Supreme Court decision uh, made. Was that yesterday or today? It was made. It was made recently, where the the Supreme Court ruled by virtue of a nine nothing decision that the NCAA cannot limit educational benefits for college players as part of their scholarship. It's a narrow victory um, for uh, college athletes. Um, goes back to uh, Austin versus NCAA, I believe. Case got appealed, kept getting appealed, came up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court agrees that the NCAA, um, they got some rules that just ain't up to stuff, violating antitrust law and all the rest of it. Um, the court's opinion written by Mr. Neil Gorsuch, NCAA seeks immunity from the normal operation of antitrust laws, and that just isn't justified by the antitrust laws. Uh, drink, this doesn't really concern, you know, name, image, and likeness, and, um, you know, the issue of paying college athletes, but it is a, it is a small victory nonetheless. Um, where do you think we go from here? You, you know what? Before you got my wheels turning about this subject, I, w I would have agreed with you on small. The more I think about it, though, is it small? This might actually end up being a, a big deal. Um, I think it's, it's small right now. It, it could We could look back at this down the line and say, oh, this was the beginning of the big, yeah. of the big stuff. Um, just like you referenced from uh, Paul Farnbaum saying this is the end of the NCAA. Listen, I don't I don't think this is the end of a billion dollar corporation, but I do think that this is the beginning of a new way a new way that players are approached now by organizations, by institutions. Um we we was cracking a joke about it, but if I mean actually if you actually read it does sound like now you know, institutions can be like, hey, man, listen, we would love for you to come play. Um, let, let, let's say this is Kentucky, John Carapar. <laughs> hey, we'd love for you to be a, a Kentucky Wildcat. Um, and we understand that, you know, your grades are like this. So here's what we're going to do. We want, we want to make sure that you can make the, the academic, you know, requirement to come to Kentucky. So we're gonna get you a tutor. But with that tutor comes a house. So you're gonna to go to the <laughs> tutor's house and he's gonna, he or she are gonna, they're gonna to tutor you right there, right? But we know you don't got time to eat. So in that house is a chef that, that's gonna cook your meals, right? And then we also have a couple of um, 2020, whatever year it is, Escalades, that's gonna take you wherever you need to go. Um, well, you know, if you, because we we don't want you walking anywhere, because you need to study. You have to study. Remember, study, study, study. We we need your academic, like you know, I, and I can keep it going. But at the end of the day, it seems like it's a loss for the NCAA, but the just the NCAA as an institution. It don't seem like it's a big loss for the colleges. It seems like this might be some of the best stuff that happened for college now. Because you're telling me I can do certain things, and as long as I can link it to an educational purpose, mm. it's going to be legal. It's going to be, <laughs> listen, it's some pretty smart people in these uh, these schools. It's some pretty smart people, and they, they're going to make the unbelievable believable if this mm. is how you're going to do it. So um, I, I do agree with you. It, it, it is, a, right now, it's a small step for the players. But I, I just feel like as time go, it's a it's a small step for coaches too, because you, man, they already talk about how much corruption is in within the NCAA, how schools are paying players won't they won't. Yo, if this goes off as we read it, or uh, as how we read it, this about to get you about to see players coming up here. Yeah, man, just got that new Lamborghini truck, man. So. You know, I hurt my toe in practice the other day, and they said they don't want me walking, so I needed a vehicle, you know, wide enough for my knees to have the space so I ain't got to put all that pressure on my big toe. So, they, you know, they, they let me borrow this Lamborghini truck. Oh, they let you borrow a Lamborghini truck from where? Oh, yeah, they got a whole car lot up back there. You know, you just go out there, pick one, pew, pew, 
you know, get what you get. And, you know, it, like, that's what I, I feel like this is going to get crazy. So you got the, the campus CarMax back there. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, we, we got we got the $40,000 vehicles here. That's for the swim team. We got the $80,000 <laughs> cars here. That's for the football team. Yep. And then right in the middle, we got $60,000. Now, that's basketball slash softball slash whatever other sport that make us some money. So the, the, here's your picks. <clears throat> Go out, do however. Like, that's how I look at it. Um, I could be totally wrong, but... I know I'm making joke of a situation that that got you know dissolved in the Supreme Court, but at the end of the day, that's what it sounds like it's gonna be. And unfortunately, it, I mean it is what it is. Um, but if I'm a player, the news I heard today should excite me. And if I'm a coach, the news I heard should excite me. Now I'm NCAA. I'm mad. I'm drinking my scotch. I'm like this is some bull crap. We're not laying down for this, but. Listen, like um, someone said, um, you said Kavanaugh, like he said, yeah, you've been making billions of dollars off these players, billions, and you have not thought about giving them their fair shake. Now you want to get upset because you finally got to give them a fair shake. If this was the NFL, we'd be blasting them for this. If this was the NBA, we'd be blasting them for this. It took the Supreme Court for you to finally give a slid of what those players deserve to get because you've been hiding behind this this is a school this is academics this is amateurism okay okay the supreme court heard you they, they, they we about the, the the scoreboard about to get even so with that said man I, I i i'm happy about the news i'm happy for the players i'm happy for the coaches and anytime they stick it to the ncaa I, i'm not too mad about it yeah this is um I need. I feel like we should have brought in a lawyer for this segment to kind of, you know, <laughs> wade through some of this legal jargon and all that. But I think right. the 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 bottom line of it, as I understand, it, is you know this is a this is a narrow win. Doesn't cover you know big ticket issues like name, image, image likeness. Some of the, the other, um, you know, bigger. I think long term goals that you know college athletes are looking at. But uh, but it but it is important. I, I don't think Supreme Court has weighed in on uh, a college athletics issue since the mid '80s. So mm -hmm. you have that going on, and now you, I think the the bottom line I'm reading is this decision is going to allow schools to provide their athletes with unlimited compensation as long as it is connected to the education, which goes into we make i mean making jokes about the car lots and everything but i that's why i think this is going like to the to these to the the have schools like your power fives and like nick saban he down there with the team like, hey, hey, right. whoa, whoa, hey, hey, hey. No, no, but look, nick saban's down there like with the car dealerships right now like hey, man, what, what you got lined up here we gotta <laughs> we gotta get the we gotta get the wheels up down here you know i gotta get the fleet up you know yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, and the Brett, uh, Brett, uh, Neil Gorsuch wrote the uh, wrote the court's opinion, but the stuff that Brett Ka Brett Kavanaugh wrote, you know, is something that I think the um, the player's attorney Jeffrey Kessler, I think he's gonna be like, you know, he's he's got bigger thoughts now, like, oh, we can litigate more based on some of the stuff he's saying. And Kavanaugh said the NCAA couches his arguments for not paying student athletes in innocuous labels, one of them probably being amateurism. Uh, but the labels cannot disguise the reality. The NCAA's business model would be flatly illegal in almost any other industry in America. Well, my Lord, if that ain't damned them to hell, I don't know what did. And that's a, you know, a quote unquote conservative justice, giving them the business. Mm. Um, I think, and by the way, I think there's something to be said for like the concept of amateurism. These guys, these guys are not professionals. There's levels to this. There's a National Football League and then there's college football, same thing for NBA and other sports. Right. But the problem with that is the NCAA is a corrupt institution. Like we, we know that they don't have the athletes like best, um, they don't have their, what, what am I looking for? They don't, they don't have their- Their best, best interests at heart. Right, right. Th thank you for filling that in for me. Yeah, they're not. They're they're not. Their interest is their bottom line. So, and we Which know is that. The dollar. 
It is. And and it's funny because if you actually like look back at the history of the NCAA, like, you know, as I as I've read, you know, a little bit on it's like they, you know, they was kind of just a random organization that just all of a sudden started like flexing on conferences and then somehow along the way, like the, the conferences started like halfway listening to them. You know, so like I don't think like it's they they out here with the whose line is it anyway? Like all the all everything out here is made up and the points don't matter and they just out here doing whatever for years and now the Supreme Court is kind of cut ends like that. Yo, y'all been clowning around for this long. You violating antitrust law, meaning there ain't no competition out here for you. So because of that, what you you got to be subject to some sort of regulation. You know what I'm saying? That's what, by the way, that's what some of these social media companies, I think, down the line, have probably probably should need to be paying attention to. You know, it's like it's like Walmart. You know, they come into every neighborhood under the sun and they run out of business. You know, all your local uh, grocery shops out the blue, and then there ain't no competition, and they can jack up the price wherever they want to. That that's the kind of thing we're looking at. Um, I think. You know, the funny thing, another funny thing to me was this is this uh, this guy, Mark Emmer, who's been running the NCAA since 2010, I believe he has some comments, I think before, or maybe it was in line with this decision. And he said, he's telling the schools now, like he's, you know, a position of moral authority saying, hey, y'all better act on some of this name image likeness stuff, or I'm going to do something. Will you sit down, please? You ain't done nothing for the past 10 years. Now, all of a sudden, we're supposed to buy into this thing like, ooh, the NCAA president's going to get involved, so we better get an act together. This is, that, but, but that's the problem. Like, if the, NC, if, if the NCAA was actually um, an institution that, like, had a reputation for, like, caring about its athletes and having their best interest in mind and all this, like, they probably wouldn't, like, take headshots over and over every time, you know, something foolish happens like the, the NCAA weight room mismatch from the NCAA tournament that was like such a, right. a absolute <laughs> clown show. You know, if that ain't right. like, th- these guys just, they don't know how to stay out of the negative press. And you, I would, and I hate to be in it. I'd hate to be in the NCAA PR department. They just getting it from every which way. I think, um, th- look, this is, this is a small step. I think it is gonna lead to, you know, uh, more bigger steps. I think name image likeness is a common sense thing that uh, most people agree on. Like you, you should be able to profit from all that. But I think as far as like paying athletes and making them salaried employees, I think that's going to be a complicated discussion that I, I don't know if we're going to be ready for that for a little bit, you know, and it's definitely something it's going to be, it's going to come down to like, if you, if it ends up going that far, there's going to be, some people just ain't gonna get paid because they ain't got no value. I, I'm sorry, the, the the JV swim team. I mean, you're probably not uh, you're probably you're probably not getting a lot of people to the to the swim to the, uh, the, the the swim tank for that one. They ain't they not they ain't nobody just uh, you know nobody's working security at the turnstiles. People just rushing in there trying to see the swim team, you know. Right. But meanwhile, the the Alabama starting quarterback, you can guarantee he probably gonna be he he gonna be make, making some good money. You know, hey, there's he, just gonna he getting his car off the the hundred grand lot. Hey, we got the hundred well, grand plus over here. That's where he gets his car. So it's just gonna it's just gonna bring into play like it's gonna there's gonna be a capitalistic approach to it. You know, like what is your value and like who wants to see you perform and like who's gonna you know get who's gonna get the the commercials you know in the local area. You know, what I'm saying that type of thing. Like some it's gonna it's gonna be where like you know, a, probably a small minority of athletes like really benefit and some of it just whatever scholarships and educational uh, benefits they want to throw at you, that's what you're going to have. So I don't think it's going to be, it's not going to be something where, you know, everybody's all of a sudden equal and pay and all this other crap. I don't think that's how it's going to be, which I think that that's still going to, you know, leave some people with a sour taste in their mouth. 